Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Alexandra and today I am tackling a living room, kitchen, dining room, all in one. It's gonna be a challenge. Before we jump into the video, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We have tons more makeovers just like this one coming at you, including your fave studio fix. Hit that subscribe button so you get notified every time we upload a video and let's get started. So we are making over Alessia's space today. As I mentioned, we gotta pack a lot into this room. This is Alessia's main living space. So there's a little alcove, kind of like a den, where she has her bedroom area, there's a bathroom, and a bit of an entryway, but this is really the apartment. This is the main space where she's gonna host, live, entertain, all the things in this one space. Okay, so I'm gonna hop on a call with Alessia, see what's working in her space, what's not, get a sense of her style, let's go. So nice to meet you. How are you doing? Too. I'm doing really well. I'm so excited. I'm so glad. Congratulations for winning a makeover with my team and I. We're so excited to take on your space. Thank you for choosing me for a makeover. Walk me through your space. What's lacking in it, yeah. what you love to see. Just tell me all about your space. I moved in pretty recently and I saw this one while I was touring and I'm like, wait, this is like the cutest, like most flirty and fun space. I've ever seen. Yeah. Right outside of the little nook wall is like my big square. That's like my living room slash my kitchen. I think big is a bit of an overstatement, but it's a good size for one person. What I wanted to initially use this space for was entertain host, but also to relax at the end of my work day. Yeah. Because I do work from home. Right now it's lacking furniture. Um, okay. <laughs> Step one, let's get you a sofa. <laughs> Not only have I been so busy that I haven't really had the time to like invest in selecting my products, making it feel a little bit more like mine, but also I just haven't figured out how I want to put everything away or put it out. So not having that still makes it feel like I, I just moved in yesterday. Before we get into your style, can you tell me about your work from home situation? So where are you working and your dream work from home scenario in your space? Yeah, I do work from home. I'm a campaign manager at an influencer agency. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> having a dedicated space to work from home is not my biggest concern. Got it. I do work inside of my space pretty often but my building does have amenities and like rooms and like rooftops oh. that I try to go to. I really can't sit still throughout the day anyways. So if I could bounce from like my sofa to like outside or something, I'll I'll do that. But what I'm hearing is you don't want to turn your living space into like an office. Yeah. It's more like you want it to be a comfortable place you could work from, but more of a place to like lounge and entertain and feel like home. Exactly. The entertaining part of it is really important for me because a lot of my friends live outside of the city. I'm glad you brought the entertaining part up because I have an idea that I'm not gonna share with you because I want it to be a surprise, but <laughs> let's move on to your style. I wanna say that when you submitted your Pinterest board, I was like, this is so dreamy. It's like anthropology style, more like traditional elements, but then just like so fun and feminine. And it's like my dream style, to be honest. Oh my God. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm a very like whimsical, dreamy kind of person. And a lot of other influences just come from my family. So coming from like a very traditional Italian family, there's a lot of really like florals. I love a lot of patterns, ornate finishes, tiny hints of playfulness or like more of like a relaxed bohemian style. It just makes it feel like my grandmother's house, especially because I'm a lot farther from my grandma now. So there's a lot of like greens, I feel like, and blues in your color palette. Mm -hmm. They're muted, they're calm. And then you have like ornate kind of details, like patterns and more traditional finishes, but it also feels like current and timeless all at the same time. Throughout my 20s, I haven't really settled much. Like I traveled a lot and this is the first place that is going to be like pretty permanent for me. Like this is where I'm planting roots. So I'm very excited to make it feel like distinctly mine. I'm so excited to see the end result. And I really, really appreciate all the time and effort that's going into my makeover. I just, I can't wait to execute it. <laughs> Thank you so much. So excited. See you all soon. Take care. Bye. The one really big challenge I think I'm gonna have is how do I fit storage, extra seating in here, a place for her to dine in 100 square feet? It's it's gonna be a challenge. It has such a good base to work with. These beautiful wood cabinets in the kitchen, the floors are really gorgeous. She's got white walls. So it's really just a great kind of blank canvas for me to transform. 
The good news for me <laughs> in this design plan is that Alessia mentioned that she doesn't need a workspace, which is great, because I can just have more leeway to really amplify the hosting part of her personality and create a space for her and her friends to have fun and hang out in. I am dubbing this whole makeover an anthropology styled space because to me it really reflects like when you walk into an anthro store there's more traditional elements you know brass accents chandeliers mixed with really whimsical fun soft touches this is going to definitely be a three-day makeover for me and my team i am going to enlist graham to do a custom shelving piece and i want to put this along the back wall that's how we're going to bring in storage so she can place her books she can place decorative items for the shelf i'm thinking we do copper pipe from the hardware store, spray paint it brass, and then more of like a rustic wood for the shelves. In a space like this, it's key to really maximize any wall space that we can get, which is why I am doing these shelves floor to ceiling. I would love to thrift an island and then paint it like a beautiful, soft, sagey color and then tile the top. Alessia had this tile pinned on her Pinterest board and I think it goes so well with all the rest of the decor. Along the back wall, I also wanna do some wallpaper. This is where we're gonna bring the whimsy in. I wanna do this like brush stroke wallpaper. It's blue and it's just like really soft and calming. I think I'm gonna add in a projector screen and a projector to really, again, save space. There's absolutely no way a TV could fit into this tiny living room kitchen. I really need to kind of think outside the box when it comes to extra seating. So I'm thinking poofs would make a great addition. They can be used as ottomans, but also really work well with the decor. A couple bar stools, just to add in as much seating as possible without overcrowding this tiny space too much. So now you know the plan, let's head into our first prep day. Hey guys, we are at Alessia's. She left us treats, left me a note that made me cry. We've been here for five minutes and I'm like, <laughs> I wanted to give you a quick little tour of the space. This is the little entryway. I don't know if I've ever seen a condo with this big of an entryway. She could put a little bench here, a little mirror, some hooks. Off to the side here is her bathroom. And then you walk into this part and this is her bedroom area. Lots of closet space. There's Amanda. And then this is her kitchen and the space we are tackling today, which is here. All of our boxes, all of the furniture. Not gonna lie, this space is way smaller than I anticipated. We've measured everything out, so we're good there. First thing we're gonna do is just start unboxing everything before we obviously get installing and designing. Look at all the pillows. Yes. I love getting handwritten notes from brands whenever they send us their product to be featured and like when they're excited, it makes me so excited. Thank you, Maisie and Blake from Timberly Wallpapers. Thank you, Buclair. This could turn into like a segment where it's like, thank you, Timberly Wallpapers. <laughs> thank you, Buclair. Got my hair up because it's time to wallpaper. Really, really excited about this wallpaper. We've never really used anything like it. It's peel and stick. The one thing I wanted to mention is that this back wall is like the tiniest bit slanted. I'm not sure if you guys are gonna be able to tell in camera. It just kind of goes like in a little bit. It's not gonna matter to us. Like it's gonna be the same way we install wallpaper. It just might look like it's on an angle because it is. First, we laid the panels out on the ground just to make sure that we had the configuration we wanted. We wanted to center the design. It was like some weird math. Like Graham was doing like one, two, three, two, three, one. Three. One, three, two, one, one three. Elena was like, yeah, I get it. And I was like, I don't get it. The rationale for that is because you want panel two to be in the middle, correct? Uh -huh. It kind of has like a high point. Oh yeah. So it would be cool to have it like a high point here. Like, yeah. Right? So it'll look like this and then it'll go back up. The point is, is that we wanted the pattern centered in the walls. So we lined them up all on the ground just to make sure that our configuration was indeed correct. Step one, peel. Have fun. 
We're installing this as we normally do. We are throwing the laser level up on the wall, getting a straight line, and then lining up the first panel to the edge of that laser level line. We're not lining it up to the ceiling or the wall because those areas are never usually straight, which is why we always, always level it first on the side. Look how slanted this wall is. Now you can see it better. So there's just like way more wallpaper here and then it goes in and we left a ton of slack at the top to make room for the wall pivoting up that way. So that way we just know that when we start to get to the like slanted part of the wall, we won't have a huge gap between the wall and the ceiling. Because this is such a compact space, wallpaper along that back wall is really just gonna create a beautiful focal point. It's gonna create impact. This one is from Timberly Interiors. Amazing quality wallpaper. I will link it down below. We have worked with just about every wallpaper imaginable and Graham and I were both like very impressed with how easy this one was to install. Install. This wallpaper looks so good. It looks so whimsical, so like soft. We are just gonna use a utility knife to cut off the excess around the baseboards and the ceiling up there. PSA, I'm gonna say this in all my videos. If you are removing peel and stick wallpaper from a rental, make sure you use heat because that's gonna ensure that it doesn't take off any of the paint behind it. Next up, this is gonna be a big project. We are bringing in the island that we thrifted. This is the perfect size. It cost us $50, which is a steal. Graham did some pre-work to make this day as smooth as possible. First, he went in and he sanded down the island. It's black. We want to make it green, so we definitely had to prime it. If you're working with a piece of furniture that has a glossy finish to it, you wanna make sure you're going in with an oil-based primer so that the paint sticks to it as much as possible, especially if it's a surface like this, it's gonna see a lot of traffic. Graham is also measuring out and cutting all the tiles we're using. He's numbering the tiles and also numbering the island. So on the day, we know exactly where these tiles are going to be placed. Now that the island is prepped and in the space, it's time to tile. So we are just flipping the tile over, covering it in tile adhesive, and then just tiling it right onto the island. I'm making this look very easy, but roll the tape. Like push from the center out. Don't drag it. Like put it on a bit of an angle and then use this face to like push. Graham? A bit more of an angle. Graham? Yeah. You're using this as a teachable moment that I really, 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 really want to show off and you ruined it. Sorry. Fine. You're doing great, sweetie. <laughs> you ready to slay it? I am gonna slay this tile. Like you've never seen me play anything before. I didn't come to play, I came to play. We're just repeating this process to cover the whole top of the island. We're not touching the sides yet. We're gonna save that for tomorrow because we need this to dry, but it's looking so good. We're going to overhang the tiles. I wanted to create kind of like a waterfall effect, a custom top to this island. And I'm just going in to clean up the grout and placing tile spacers in between each tile so that everything is all even and dries nicely. We are using real tile, just like we used in Alessandra's kitchen. If you wanna know how you can get away with using real backsplash tile in a rental, we did a really, really cool hack, so check out the video up here. I always say this whenever we do a tiling project on this channel, it's not as difficult as you think it's going to be, as long as you have someone with the right tools, someone who can guide you. But yeah, it's kind of like meditative. We're getting to a flow. The alternative that I had thought about using originally is of course peel and stick tile. Peel and stick tile also works really well on furniture, like this island. If you don't want to do it as an involved DIY as real tile, peel and stick is the way to go. Tomorrow, once the top of the island is dry, we're going to flip it over and do the sides. But for now, we are going to give this a coat of paint. So now it's time to install this custom shelving. I'm so excited to see this come together. Graham and I have done many drawings together. Let me tell you how he did this DIY because it's actually fairly simple. The first thing Graham did was pick up copper piping from the hardware store. At the same time, he also picked up one big continuous piece of wood that is a rough cut. 
It's cheaper, but it has a more rustic antique look. My original idea was to go with authentic barnwood, but it's very expensive and we needed a lot of it. So I like this alternative as a cheaper option. So next thing Graham did was sand the wood down and he applied some stain in the color English chestnut and a one coat finish to seal it. Sealing it means that Alessia can put a glass of water on it and it won't like warp the wood or leave a mark. She can easily clean it as well. So now that Graham has all the materials, we have to make the shelf actually come to life. I'm jumping on a call with him to plan this whole, this whole thing out. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Okay, so this is like a little bit of a mock-up. That drawing looks amazing, so. Equal distance here, a little yep. bit larger here to put larger items on. This shelf will be the same height as the armrest of the couch. Yeah, cool. And then just figuring out the measurements for the piping. So we're gonna have two coming down here, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna have two coming down on the other side. So this is gonna be like symmetrical. I just ruined the drawing, didn't I? No, it still looks good. <laughs> <laughs> but as you were going with the marker, I was like, oh my God. How much space do you want for the top shelf where it connects to the wall? Because it's going to curve a little bit. There's going to be like an elbow. What's this distance? Because we only got 20 inches. I feel like it should be like 15. So a little bit closer to the bulkhead. We want to showcase it and also still have room on the shelf to like put things. And then we'll do this the same 15 down here. It's going to look incredible. It's going to look really good. Like so good. So good. Okay, thank you. Bye. I love that the sofa is going to fit right into the shelving unit, saving as much space as possible, but really maximizing the storage and shelving that Alessia has in this room. So now it's time for Graham to actually build this thing. Graham sanded down the copper piping, measured, cut, and soldered it. Note that you actually don't have to solder copper. You do if you are putting it in a bathroom, which is usually what copper piping is for. You're essentially like welding the copper together. Graham is so extra and he goes above and beyond all the time. So he soldered it, but you can actually just use adhesive to make sure it sticks together. And the cool thing is if you use adhesive, this DIY actually uses no power tools. So we are measuring the height of the sofa and then throwing up the laser level where the sofa arms are, because that's where we want the first shelf to start. We want to act as a bit of a side table. These are what attach to the wall. Graham and I have figured out the distance of the copper piping from the wall. We put one up just to make sure that it all works, that it looks good. We're gonna end our first prep day here. We have another prep day tomorrow where we're actually gonna get the brackets and the shelves up on the wall, but I'll see you guys tomorrow. We're back. It's day two. I'm feeling so excited to get these shelves up and to see them complete. Oh my God, we're matching today. <sighs> so the first thing I'm gonna do is put some trim around the edge of the island. We're gonna paint it the same color as the island. We're gonna flip the island over and then towel the sides. Let's do it. You know what this looks like? What? Brie. Using adhesive and super glue, we are adhering this trim to the edge of the tiles. So now it is time for the custom shelving. You wanna make sure you are using anchors. We pre-drilled holes and put in anchors before this. This is shelving, it's on a wall, so you wanna make sure it is secured to the wall with anchors. How many times can I say anchors? <laughs> One sentence. Use anchors. <laughs> the next thing we have to do is add in the first piece of wood before we hang the second piece of copper piping on the left side, because you can't slide the wood in after you put the pipes up. Well, that's sturdy. Can you reach? No. Ah, uh, no. <laughs> I love that you thought about it for a second. Yeah. No. Well. <laughs> nice. Should it look so good? It looks so good. Alexander drilling content 2.0. It's always me going <laughs> I do have a really, really long drill bit in my car. Get that out. Nope, I got it. It's going. It doesn't look like it's going that well. <laughs> no, I think it is. Look. No, it's not. <laughs> oh 
my god. Wow. <laughs> you got this. There's no way. There's. <laughs> We can get rid of this thing now. I can't breathe. <laughs> oh yeah. Woo! Do you think we have enough content of this? Yes. Now we're mounting the two remaining copper pipes and those two small shelves. This is all coming together. It looks so good. Are you guys ready to see this unit? Like this is like my whimsical fairy tale dream of a <laughs> shelf. Amazing. Truly. The plan was always to make the brass piping look a little bit tarnished. So we've used copper pipes, as you saw, we spray painted them brass, and then I'm just going in with some rich espresso acrylic paint. You could use rub and buff. We couldn't find any rub and buff in the color we liked. We could only find it in acrylic paint, but this method also works too. I'm using a brush and just slapping it on and then taking a rag and just kind of like rubbing it in almost. That's giving more of the effect that I'm going for. I'm gonna get Carla to get a nice tight shot for you tomorrow so you can see it up close. We are done tiling the island for the most part. We're gonna grow out tomorrow. Signing off, I'll see you guys tomorrow for reveal day. So exciting. Love you. bye. Hi guys, I am so, so excited. It's reveal day and I just, I cannot wait to see the space come together. So as you guys saw yesterday, we finished the shelves. I also wanted to show you guys how the paint dried on the pipe. It looks so good. It looks like tarnished brass, which is exactly what I was going for. The paint technique really came through. Let's for real finish this island. It's been a three day process. Okay, right. <laughs> like we're still on this island. So the first thing we're gonna do to this island is add some wheels. Do a half curve wheel. Okay. Then grab like as low down. So we're gonna start like that. Yeah. For <laughs> sake. Oh my God. Oh my God. I can't believe this. It's like a custom, beautiful island. So the idea is if Alessia wants to move it, she can pick it up and wheel it. We're gonna grout it. I'm really not dressed to grout, but uh, let's do it. We are using white pre-mixed grout. This is left over from Alessandra's makeover because we are all thrifty queens over here. This is good, right? Um, yeah, you know, like, the, just you just want to get it, try, try not to keep, keep the mess, like. Okay, not like, Psh. Yeah. The good news is that these tiles are pre-sealed so we don't have to deal with any haziness. Graham is painting the trim of the island the same color as the base, this beautiful green color. It's all coming together. Okay, so the grout is being finished up on the island and I am just putting bulbs in this track light. People think the track lights are not cute and most of them aren't cute, but you can find beautiful ones like this. And I feel like it just elevates the space so much. Perfect. Okay, Carla, you want to turn it on? It's gonna flat blast me in the face, but. For the other light in this space, I went for something very traditional feeling to really kind of pair nicely with the whimsical elements in this space. Stunning, beautiful, never before seen. Show-stopping, spectacular, never the same. We thrifted this for under $100, it was 70. I wouldn't normally pick a light like this, but in this space, it just makes total sense. Really cool earrings for the light. So good. <laughs> 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 Ooh, it's so pretty. The blue goes with the wallpaper. The pink adds like a different tone. This sofa is of course from Article, one of my favorite places to get furniture. Will it fit is the question. So. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's like we planned this out or something. I can't say enough good things about this sofa. We've used it a couple times. It is so, so great for small spaces. We did plan this out intentionally so that when Alessia has friends over, they can put a mug or a glass of water. 
This mirror has been favorited on my Etsy account for so long. Such a statement mirror. It has these curves at the top, kind of a different shape. And mirrors are always so great for small spaces, especially this one because it's facing the doors. So all the light is just gonna bounce off of it and make it feel bigger and brighter in here. So beautiful. A small change that you can make that has such a big impact to a space is changing out your outlet plates. I think people don't realize that this is such an easy switch, it takes two seconds, literally. We are adding in these brass plates, again, going with that more traditional elements, ornate details. You can get these on Amazon or you could spend a little bit more money and get them from places like Anthropology. This hack is also reversible. Just keep your old plates in little Ziploc bags, store them away when you move converse them, literally takes five minutes. This is probably the piece I am most excited about in this space. I mean the custom shelves though, sorry. They're amazing. But in terms of accessories, this is just so beautiful. Found this piece at HomeSense and this could totally be an anthropology dupe. I love it so much. Alessia really wants to use this space to entertain. So I just thought this would be like the perfect addition to her space. One of the ways I'm bringing in extra seating is with poofs. Poofs are a great way to add either like surface space to put books and then a drink or extra seating. And they can be kind of like tucked away, hidden, and then pulled out when you need them. These ones are in this beautiful mustard color that's gonna really just like tie in with all the other accents I'm bringing in. I'm gonna deal with the modem situation over here. So normally I would just pop the modem in a basket or mantle to the wall, but the outlets are quite high on the wall here. So I'm thinking a solve is to just put a basket in front of it. But I also think this is gonna be so functional because Alessia can put blankets and pillows in here. We're gonna fill the sofa with cushions. So when she just wants to like lie on her sofa and not be surrounded by cushions, she can just throw them in here. I always knew this was gonna be a tight squeeze. What I'm actually thinking is that we move the hoofs to the side of the sofa. I can tuck them in even under the shelves, which is nice. This actually works so well as like a little storage area. So when Alessia has friends over, she can pull that out. This feels better already actually. Okay, let's peel the tape off this. This island is stunning. One of my favorite thrift flips that we've done on this channel, I would say. So for the front of the island, there's two drawers here. I think I'm gonna... <laughs> I think I'm going to mix and match the knobs on the front. Anthropology does have really beautiful, fun knobs. So yeah, this is just paying a little homage. I'm bringing in these beautiful stools. I'm already feeling like this setup might not be the right setup because I like can't really move behind them. I'm thinking we turn the island around and just like try it that way and see if it works. Yeah, I'm not opposed to this. I do think that with the stools in the kitchen, like facing the living room, it's gonna feel really cramped when you're like sitting here. But this way she can still open the oven. She can use this for prep space. Yeah, I think this is it. I wanna style the whole space and once you have everything in place, it's easier to kind of see where things need to go. But for now, this really works. I love how much seating she has. She can really like host a lot of people in this space, which is cool. Now we are installing the projector. <laughs> Did you hear my voice? Projector. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stage. Project. Literally. <laughs> Alessia had this projector and this is actually such a great hack if you live in a space the size of this one and don't have a place to mount a television. Just a note, we made sure it wasn't blocking any of the sprinklers, but look. This is so cool. Oh my gosh. It like totally turns into a movie theater in here. We've got our projector screen. We obviously need our projector, but I wanted to show you guys this really fun hack. So I got this off Amazon. I think it was like $30, $30. And it turns your projector into like a smart TV basically. So it has Netflix on it, YouTube, all those apps. You can also cast your computer to this thing too. If you're wary about getting a projector, I know I have been in the past cause I'm like, oh, then I have to hook up my computer and I have to get the right cords and there's lots of cords involved. This just makes it super seamless. Uh oh, the chandelier. Uh... Oh, shit. We have to move it down to the second shelf. But I would like all of Team AG to please come and gather near or on the sofa. So we're going to hit you two. I knew I wanted to have That's me. Wow. Somehow, 
Heartbreak feels good in a place like this. And then we have the extension cord running down here on the left side. So it's like nice and seamless. All the cords are hidden. And then it plugs in behind the basket. So the sound comes out of the projector and it's not the greatest, but Alessia has this really cute little Bluetooth speaker and the projector actually connects to Bluetooth. So we can hook this up for her and she can have a little mini sound system. Now onto my favorite part. We are styling these shelves. This is a process. You're gonna wanna step back, rearrange. Here's a couple things to keep in mind when styling your shelves at home. You can hide cords with an art print. Use pretty baskets in your shelves for storage. This is gonna hide anything unsightly. Use groups of three, but remember to play with height. The three things shouldn't be the same height. You want lots of different levels. That's gonna make your shelf look really dynamic and styled. Alternate the way you stack books. So some shelves, they can be stacked horizontally. Other shelves, they can be stacked vertically. You wanna play with just different configurations. My last tip is to layer things in front of art prints. This is gonna create depth in your shelf and make it look more full than it might be. Now it's time for the finishing touches. These cushions are from Tonic Living, a Canadian-based brand. They, hands down, have the best inserts for throw cushions. And a tiny detail like this can really make or break a design, in my opinion. These totally complete the space. I'm styling the bar cart with some cute glassware, a cocktail shaker, some cute coasters, placing some beautiful flowers on the island. I love how even these roses look antique, you know? They look like traditional. They fit so well in this space. And this cute shell napkin holder to complete this little setup. I'm styling the kitchen open shelving with some cute mugs and bowls. And of course, my favorite finishing touch, lighting a candle. It is time to bring Alessia in. I cannot wait to show her this space. Let's see what she thinks. Can you walk me through what your space looked like before? So my space was really bare. I hadn't really dedicated any time to designing it yet. I had a lot of hopes for it, but I really just wanted this space to be like a gorgeous place to like host my friends totally. and like relax at the end of the night. Totally. And so, I'm so and, excited. And when that. we got here, it was definitely not in any shape to do that. Yeah, no. it was, there, was no, there was nothing in here. Okay, yeah. are you ready? Yeah. Oh my God. One, two, three. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, it's gorgeous. Oh my God. Oh my God. This is so pretty. I can't believe it. Oh my God. No, this is gorgeous. Oh my God, I didn't even see the floor lamp. Isn't it cute? That's so pretty. I think you actually pinned this. Oh my God, no, this, this is tile. <laughs> space. <laughs> you can come anytime you want. I'm already planning your bedroom and entryway, so <laughs> I'm not going to stop you. <laughs> Alessia's reaction was the cutest. As always, I'll see you guys next time. Bye. You know you're mic'd, right? <laughs> it has to be next to that. It's not, I don't think this, I think this is Bluetooth. I don't yeah. think this is. Mic'd. Mic'd. Did you guys get that?